think I need a woman in my life. You know, someone to keep me company, keep me on track. It'd be great, I feel like. Maybe I'll try that match thing. I couldn't help to notice the white coat. You wouldn't happen to be a nurse, would you? I sure am. Well, I'm on these pain meds, and I had this knee surgery six days ago, and I kind of just don't understand why I'm on the drugs that I'm on. Oh, sure. What are you taking? Uh, well, this is kind of what they gave me. Oh, let me take a look. Let's see. Okay, yep, yeah, exactly what I suspected, an oxyparin, subcutaneous injections, 30 milligrams every 12 hours, 12 to 24 hours after surgery for 7 to 10 days. And you do know how to take this medication, correct? Oh yes, I've been giving myself medications in my right and left abdominal wall. Perfect. The only problem is I don't understand what it's doing. Oh, okay, well I'll help you out here. So an oxyparin is a low molecular weight heparin whose mechanism of action is antithrombin dependent. It is given to patients after knee or hip replacement surgery, abdominal surgery, unstable angina, and non-Q-wave myocardial infarction. So in your case, after your knee replacement surgery, you are prescribed this medication to reduce the risk of developing deep vein thrombosis. Deep vein thrombosis is formation of blood clots in veins located deep within the muscles, usually in the legs. Anoxaparin changes the blood's normal clotting course by binding antithrombin to factor 10A, suppressing the formation of thrombin and making it easier, or harder, sorry, for clots to form. This helps prevent a potentially and fatal pulmonary embolism. Make sense? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Great. So have you experienced any side effects on this medication? Perhaps diarrhea, nausea, excessive bleeding, fever, heart arrhythmias, rash, pneumonia, neurological impairment, allergic reaction? No, none of those. Great. All right. So the I'm sure the surgeon made sure you weren't taking any meds that are contraindicated or could interact with anoxaparin, but just a reminder, avoid oral anticoagulants non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, platelet aggregating inhibitors, and drugs containing dextrin or ASA for the possibility of interaction with blood clotting mechanisms and the risk of excessive bleeding or hemorrhage. It actually does contain a black box warning stating the possibility of epidural and sp or spinal hematomas which could result in permanent paralysis. Any questions? No, I think that covers it. Thank you. But I really... <laughs> Do you guys have any more questions for me? Do I have any questions? No. 
Baby, you and your high cholesterol, you have to start watching what you eat. I have been. Do you think I'm putting me on medication? If they do, it'll most likely be simvastatin. It'll help lower your cholesterol and help, your, uh, help you help lower your chance of heart disease. For all you science people, simvastatin is a specific inhibitor of HMG uh, COA reductase, the enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of HMG COA to mevalonate an early and rate limiting step in the bisynthetic pathway for cholesterol. Dear meds, what are the side effects? Well, it may cause abdominal pain, constipation, nausea, vomiting, upper respiratory infections. Contact your physician if you develop any allergic reaction for any musculoskeletal effects. Do not take if you're breastfeeding pregnant, have active liver disease, or using jump for cyclosporin and risk for acute coronary syndrome. Hyperacute what? It's just a, a fancy term for high cholesterol. It can normally be controlled with a better diet, exercise, cessation of smoking, and drinking normally. But seeing here how he has chronic use of this, not use of this, the doctor's concerned for his risk of plaque buildup oh. and could potentially result in a myocardial infarction. Uh, I mean stroke. Oh dear. Aye. How can we lower his risk of having that? Well, for starters, we're going to put him on a very successful anticoagulant called Plavix. Uh, I think I've heard of that. How does that work? Are there any side effects? Uh, I'm so glad you asked. Plavix is administered to help patients who are at risk for the buildup of atherosclerotic plaques, plaques due to recent MIs, strokes, some of the things that Arthur has been prone to. Um, it is prescribed for those, and the mechanism of action is an anticoagulant, antiplatelet agent, as well as being an antithrombotic. Um, more specifically, it's a CYP450 enzyme that inhibits the binding of ADP to its receptor sites on the platelets to metabolize it. It's also a substitute for patients who are unable to take aspirin. Some other, it'll, put, it'll thin his blood so that clots can't form which will block his heart and eventually his arteries. Oh, that's okay. I understand that. I think that's going to be helpful for my husband. Yeah, I mean, it has a good reputation, but be careful when you administer it to Arthur. It should be given orally, with or without food, and the goal is to get his blood thin to a certain extent, but too little or too much can have adverse side effects. So what are the side effects? Oh, another good question. Arthur could experience any of the following, such as chest pain, headache, flu-like symptoms, pain, dizziness, diarrhea, rash, rhinitis, depression, and occasionally urinary tract infections. But if any of these bother him, please don't hesitate for him to come back and we can maybe put him on something else. Okay, that sounds good. Um, he does have other drugs that he's taking right now. Are there any interactions with those drugs? Um, it does induce you to have thin blood, so you should be careful with using over-the-counter things like NSAIDs such as Tylenol, Aspirin, Motrin, so you should probably avoid these. Um, you also shouldn't take it if he's ever put on warfarin because it will inhibit the liver enzyme. And additionally, Plavix should not be given to him if he has an active chronic bleed, including ulcers or intracranial hemorrhage. Does he have any of those? Oh, no, he doesn't. Okay, perfect. Um, hey, can I, can I still go sailing? Yes, of course you can still go sailing. Um, but just be careful because a bump of the head or laceration will 
the, it will inhibit your bleeding so you could bleed out and bleed profusely and lose a lot of blood. So we want to be very careful, you know, when you're getting on and off that ship. Okay, well, thank you very much. You were very helpful today. Of course. Goodbye, Arthur. Thank you for waiting. Um, you, you know you're taking a long time. I have stuff to do now. I am so sorry. I, I'm just a little concerned. I see you've missed your last few uh, clinic appointments to get your PT checked. You know, you're, you're I on don't, warfare. I don't, I don't need all that, that PT and TP. I don't need that stuff. Okay, well, do you understand how warfarin works? Jim, you see, warfarin is an anticoagulant that functions by interrupting the vitamin K oxidation cycle. Coagulation factors 2, 7, uh, 6, and 10, and proteins C and S are manufactured by the liver in a process requiring vitamin K. Before vitamin K can work to produce these coagulation factors, it must be activated by vitamin K epoxide reductase complex 1, or VKORC1. Warfarin inhibits the VKORC1 enzyme, preventing vitamin K activation thus interrupting the synthesis of the necessary factors for coagulation. The biggest concern with a blood thinning medication is that it actually thins your blood and so you're at greater risk for bleeding and hemorrhage. Um, do you do any, any contact sports? You know, when I have time, I like to play uh, football. I think you, you Americans call it soccer. Yes, soccer, yes. Um, you just need to be very careful if you do have any physical contact with someone, you want to watch those sites, look for any bruising, swelling, apply ice immediately, and contact a, fish, a physician immediately um, if you feel that your blood pressure is low or if you notice any dark, tarry stool. I don't think I have that problem. Very fast. Please keep in mind that warfarin is a teratogen, so we want to take you off of it or consider an alternative before you might get pregnant or breastfeed. I'll, I'll think about that one. All right. I will call you if, I, if me and my man decide we want to have a baby. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Peacock. It's been good to see you today. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.